Okay, so maybe you've seen Maxwell's equations, uh, but there's actually two ways to write them. You can write them in integral form or differential form. And in introductory physics, it's kind of easier to do the, the integral form. So let's, let, me, let me write down the integral form of Maxwell's equations, and then I'll show you how to get them in differential form. So the first Maxwell's equations uh, that we have is Gauss's Law. So Gauss's Law says this. I'll write it out. E dot n hat dA equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. This says that the flux through some closed surface, the electric flux E dot n hat dA, that's the, that's the flux, is equal to the total charge inside divided by epsilon naught. That's Gauss's law. Now the next one we, we have is Gauss's law for magnetism. It says this, the flux, the magnetic flux B dot n hat dA through a closed surface is zero. And it's zero because there, it's the same form. One of the nice things you'll see about electric and magnetic fields is that they, they're very similar, except that we don't have individual magnetic charges that we know of. We don't have magnetic monopoles. We don't have a version right there. The next one we have is Faraday's law. It looks like this. The line integral around a closed path of E dot dr is equal to negative the derivative with respect to time of b dot n hat dA. And you'll notice this is the same as that, except it's not closed. So this says if you take some, uh, well, if you do it from this side, if I have the magnetic flux of some surface and there's a change in magnetic flux with time, that's going to produce an electric field around that path. Normally, if you take the electric field and integrate around a path in circuits, you'd have that integral is equal to zero. We say uh, that's Kirchhoff's loop rule. E dot dr is the voltage, right, around a closed path would be zero. But it's not here if the magnetic flux is changing, and that's Faraday's law. And then we have something similar for the magnetic field. Uh, it looks like this. If you integrate B dot dr around a closed path, it's actually equal to mu naught I n plus mu naught epsilon naught, the derivative with respect to time of E dot n hat dA. So the same thing, if I have a electric flux that's changing with time, that produces a magnetic field around that path. A, a, okay. But there's another way to make a magnetic field, and that's with moving charge. And we don't have that moving charge over here because it'd, be, it'd be a moving magnetic charge, and then those two would look exactly the same. So these are Maxwell's equations uh, in integral form. I'm assuming that you've seen those before, so that's kind of just uh, a review. Now we're going to define two things. Number one is the charge density. This is the charge per unit volume, but if that's the case, then I can actually find the total charge uh, in some volume. I'll call that Q enclosed is going to be the integral over that volume of rho dV, where that rho is the charge density. It's the, ch the charge per unit volume. So if I know that function, and I integrate over the volume, I get the total charge. And so if the charge density was constant, you could just pull that out and you get, the, you get charge times volume. Okay? But it doesn't have to be constant. The other thing to define is the, uh, the current density. So I guess I should write it out. I shouldn't have written these out at the beginning. Current density. So the same thing I can say, if I want to find the total current passing through some surface, I'll say uh, I in, which is path passing through, is going to be a surface integral of j dot n hat dA, where j is the current density. So imagine, uh, it's sort of like the flux, right? The total current flux through some surface is the current through that surface. And the j dot n hat matters. If I have some uh, something like this, and the current is going, the current density is that way. What well, doesn't matter? The current at that point only matters the part that's perpendicular to the surface. Okay, but then I can find the total surface, the total current. Okay, so now one more thing. Um, let's write down uh, two important ideas 
Uh, number one is Stokes theorem. I need to I need to use Stokes theorem and the divergence theorem. Okay, so uh, let me write down the divergence theorem. If for some fu vector function f, the following is true. If I integrate f dot n hat dA over some surface, that is going to be equal to a volume integral of del dot f dV. So we can get a surface integral into a volume integral. And here I should remind you that del is the operator in Cartesian coordinates, partial with respect to x, you can't even see that, partial with respect to y, partial with respect to z. But we're not going to use that. We're just saying that is true. Okay. And then I have, so this, this is divergence. And then I have Stokes' theorem. It says that a path integral of some function f dot dr around a closed path is equal to a flux, a surface integral. I guess I should call that a. I called it a over here. A surface integral of the curl del cross f dot n hat dA. So you actually get the flux of the curl. So curl of f is, is that's the curl, and then I have to take n dot n hat dA so it looks like a flux. And that's Stokes' theorem. Okay, so let's use these to rewrite those. Let's start with um, this. So let's start with Gauss's law. So Gauss's law, let me re rewrite it. It is the flux E dot n hat dA equals Q enclosed, or Q whatever you want to call it, over epsilon naught. Now, right here I have a surface integral. That's a closed surface. I can use the divergence theorem to write this as a volume integral. So this becomes the volume integral of del dot E dV. Stokes theorem, I mean divergence theorem says that. I can also write this as a volume integral. 1 over epsilon naught, the volume, there's a volume, volume of rho dV. And these two have to be the same volumes. This is the charge enclosed in this volume defined by that surface area. And if I change that surface area into volume, then these volumes have to be the same thing. So I can actually subtract the this from each side and combine them together. So I actually get this, the integral over some volume of del dot E minus 1 over epsilon naught rho, all of that times the volume element has to be equal to 0. And if that's the case, if this is true for any volume, then this has to be tr this has to be zero. So if this part has to be zero, then I get del dot e equals rho over epsilon naught, and that's Gauss's law in differential form. And why does it look different? Because we don't have it doesn't deal with some finite space. Hold on. Okay. Um, so that's Gauss's law for a point in space. We don't need a we don't need an actual surface. Okay. So that's that. Now we could do the exact same thing with Gauss's law for magnetism. B dot n hat d a equals zero. It's the same thing except this is going to be zero. So it's really easy to see that del dot b equals zero. So now we have two of them. Next, we can go to um, Faraday's law. So let's write down Faraday's law. The integral of e dot dr equals negative d dt, the integral of b dot n hat 
dA. The first thing I want to do, this is a space integral, and this is a time derivative. So this doesn't, the integral doesn't depend on time. I can actually bring the derivative in, but if I do that, I don't want it to change any space. I just want it to change time. So it actually becomes a partial derivative. So this is going to be negative, uh, and there's negative signs there because of Lenz's law. It just says that the, the rate of change of flux, uh, the, the induced current opposes the change in flux, but that's not important. So I have the partial of B with respect to T dot n hat, dA. Okay, so now there is a surface integral and this is a line integral. And just like before, I want to get this into a surface integral. So I can use Stokes' theorem. So Stokes' theorem says that this would be equal to a surface integral, this is surface, surface of del cross E, the curl, dot n hat dA. And I'm going to put that equal to this, negative the partial of B vector with respect to T dot n hat dA. And they have to be over the same surface area that, because of the way it's defined. So now I can move this to the other side and I get the surface in, of the surface integral of the curl of E del cross E minus the partial of B with respect to T dot n hat dA equals zero, so that thing has to be zero. So then I get del cross E equals, oh, this is plus, negative dB dT partial. And that's fair to us all. Okay, one more. Now we can do the same kind of thing with uh, the Ampere-Maxwell law. So this says uh, the integral of B dot dr equals mu naught i n plus mu naught epsilon naught ddt e dot n hat dA. So that's a surface integral. That's a space. And so again, I can use Stokes' law, Stokes' theorem to change that into a surface integral. So that would be equal to, uh, I'll put an A there, A there, del cross B, the curl of B dot n hat dA. Okay, but then I have this. That's my problem. But I can use my definition of uh, current density and write that as mu naught A J dot n hat dA plus mu naught, ooh, that's a naught, epsilon naught, now I can bring that dt in just like I did before as a partial. A, the partial of E with respect to T dot n hat dA. Okay, so now I can just bring everything to one side. And you know, you may think, why do we bring everything to one side instead of equal to zero? Um, I'm not sure I have a best explanation for that, but everyone does that. So I just, I, under peer pressure, I'm succumbing to peer pressure and so I'm gonna do what everyone else does. So I get del cross B, uh, for that term, and then I'm going to get minus mu naught j, the n hat dA, those are all the same n hat dA, so they all factor out. Uh, minus mu naught epsilon naught partial of E with respect to T dot n hat dA equals zero. So del cross B equals mu naught j plus mu naught epsilon naught partial of E with respect to T. There you go. And so again, these are important because these give relationships between electric and magnetic fields at a particular location. I don't need to say here's some finite space or here's a box or here's a sphere or here's a pillbox or here's a, a cylinder. It doesn't matter. I just find the inherent relationships between them. So that's what's really nice about these. And, and that's your differential form of Maxwell's equations.